why the narcissist life sucks. Why the narcissist life is very unpleasant. Why it causes them discomfort and unhappiness. The narcissist wants to portray this image of their lives being so great. They want to make you think that they're living a happy and enjoyable life. They are living in comfort and luxury with few problems or worries. And they may even want you to think that you're missing out. They may try to make you think that there's a side of them that you will never get to experience. Because that's secretly how they feel about you. They know that you withhold the best side of yourself away from them after how they have treated you. They know that you cannot be yourself around them. And they do get jealous when they see that you are able to be yourself around other people. They have a strong sense of entitlement. And they hate to see other people receiving a privilege or special treatment that they felt they were more deserving of. Which is why they will always try to get you to notice them. They will try to get your attention. Because they feel like they're missing out on something. And they want to be involved. But you should not want to be involved with a narcissist. They may try to mirror you or appeal to your ideals. But you need to realize that it's just a facade. It's just a deceptive outward appearance. And beneath that is nothing that you would want to be a part of. The narcissist is very skilled at showing you whatever they think you want to see. They know how to plan and coordinate the elements of a situation to produce a desired effect. It's like they're on a film set. When the director says action, they know how to act. They know how to represent certain events. They know how to engage in excitable and notable activity. They know how to make something worthy of your attention. And they will display excitement, activity, bustle, happenings and occurrences. Whatever they think you want to see. Whatever they think will grab your attention. But it's still just a film set. None of this is really happening. It's a controlled environment. It's a place where rules, regulations and behavioural norms are subject to strict enforcement or scrutiny. They are involved in careful and detailed examination in order to get information about it. So none of this is going to benefit you in any way. It's not something you should want to be a part of. It's not something you should want to be involved in. Because it isn't real. It isn't genuine or authentic. It's just used to get your attention. And it is your attention that keeps the film rolling. Because you're the real star of the show. Without you, it would cease to exist. And a lot of the habitual behaviours they engage in are precautionary. They are preventive. They are designed to keep something from happening. Rather than to give you the authority or means to do something. Because they are trying to prevent you from controlling them.
they want to control you. And if you have difficulty controlling them, it makes them more able to control you. Narcissists are always monitoring you. They're always tracking your movements. They're always watching in every moment. They're always analyzing. They're examining every situation methodically and in detail in order to explain and interpret it. They're always scheming. They're involved in making secret and unhand plans. Some of them do it for no apparent reason. Simply because they find it fulfilling. While others will do it without preparation. They love schemes. They love making plans. They love deceiving and misleading people. They love leading people astray. And leaving you in a state of ignorance, bewilderment and helplessness. That is their livelihood. It's their everyday, ordinary activity. It's their nourishment. It's necessary for their health and good condition. It keeps them going. They have to do that all the time. It makes them feel more confident. It makes them feel intelligent. It makes them feel like they're pulling the strings. They're the supervisor and controller. They direct and oversee everything you do. They're fooling you and you can't see it because you're just inferior. You're their subordinate. Well, they're in control of you because they're so strong. They're better than you. And of course, they're also very good people. They're honest, helpful and morally good. They're just trying to do the right thing. They look at you like the stationary target. Someone who could not move too quickly. Someone who they can just criticize and attack all day. A person towards which all of their frustrations are directed. While they're just dancing around you in a quick and lively way with pleasure and excitement. While it's difficult for you to track and trace them. And they can just do whatever they want. Without any schedule or moral obligations. There may be occasions where they do have to report to you or fulfill your request for whatever reason and that is when they can become very resentful towards you. They feel like they have to get you back somehow. They have to cause some kind of disruption. to show that you're not in complete control of them. They have too much practical knowledge and experience to fall for that. It's like a child-parent relationship. It's very unprofessional, but they feel like they should be able to do whatever they want. They have to be able to do what they want. It has to be set up in a way 
where they have no commitments or moral obligations, no authority. Their schedule has to revolve around control, rather than it revolve around doing something they enjoy, something that relates to certain qualities that are distinctive to them as an individual, because it's something they value or are interested in. It's never anything like that. They're like children who want to be the parent. They pretend to be adults. And they just do whatever they want. They're children running around. It gives them a narcissistic supply. And while this may seem fun at first, this illusion is never going to be anything good for you. They will only use it to sustain you so that they can sustain it. And then they will use it to hurt you at some point in the future. It's going to take away all of your energy. And you have to sacrifice your own life just to sustain it. You're the only reason why the illusion exists in the first place. You're the star of the show, but you're also the audience. Without you, the illusion would cease to exist, but it has to be maintained. Even if it is just a scam, even if it is just a deceptive scheme or trick used to cheat you out of something. It looks like something you're always working towards, as though there's always more progress to be made. There's always something else that needs to be done. You can never just reach out and grab it. Because if you could, that would mean there's something wrong with them. That would mean they'd have to change something. They put all of this stuff in the way that they expect you to deal with. And that's meant to be the problem. But if you manage to solve the things that they're always complaining about, there still has to be a problem so that they have a means of expression and release. If there isn't a problem, they panic. They experience sudden uncontrollable fear and anxiety because the actual problem is what they're really trying to interrupt. That's what they're trying to keep you away from so that you can't get to it. And that is why you should never confront them on what they're doing. Because they already know and nothing good is going to come out of it. It will just make things worse. It will just be another weapon for them to use against you. Some of them are more aware of their problems and condition than others. But however aware they may be, they really don't want to reflect on that. It makes them very angry and upset. They just see it as a threat, as something you are using to intimidate them. They just see it as something bad. as though you are just going to destroy their life. And that is when they can become very dangerous. They will try to destroy you.
which is why I don't recommend confronting them on what they're doing. Nothing good is going to come out of it. It's good for you to realize and accept it on your own. But it's not good for you to share that information with them. The narcissist life sucks. It revolves around maintaining this environment that they have set up. Because they know that they lack the capabilities to achieve anything naturally or on their own. Everything has to be rigged in their favor. Everything has to be managed and conducted fraudulently so that they can gain an advantage. And as soon as you depart from the established role or course that they have laid out for you, from being a very quiet person who never says much or contributes to anything that you are supposed to be for them, it will reveal their true nature. Because you're like their life support. You're what's keeping them together. And when you start moving around and doing your own thing, they start acting odd and eccentric. Because that's not meant to happen. You're supposed to be there so that they can gather and acquire this increasing number of dysfunctional people and things. They need your help with that. But what they present to the world is very different. They want to present this image of being this person who is full of life and energy. This person who is cheerful, optimistic, open, natural and uninhibited. Who is just going about living their life. And you just become this person who seems to be lacking strong features or characteristics. Someone who is uninteresting and doesn't show any strong emotions. Someone who is so lucky to have found them. Someone who is so lucky to have them there to help you. But when you start moving around, and doing things that they can't track, things that they can't control. Everything will change very quickly. That is when you will begin to experience disappointment, resulting from the discovery that it is not as good as you believed it to be. Because it's really just an illusion. It falls apart when you don't stay in your place to sustain it. Because it's just a fabrication. It's been invented to deceive people. And that is when you realize that everything is nothing more than just a toy house for them to play in. None of it's even real. It's just a place for them to do what they want. A place for them to get the love they never received. Which is always acquired in a dysfunctional way. As they were already broken before they were able to receive love. Which is why their concept of love is very different to yours.
they see love as something you give rather than something you share. To them, love is something that they receive from you. Because they have no love to give to you, they're empty vessels and empty vessels who have the least talent and knowledge usually speak the most, speak the loudest and show excessive and unnecessary concern about something because they're looking for you to fill them up with your love. The only problem is nothing is ever enough for them. They're like bottomless buckets. Nothing you pour into them will ever be enough. They will always feel miserable and dissatisfied with their lives, no matter what you do for them. They will never be able to bond with you in a way where it would help them succeed in dealing with their disorder and become the people that they desire to be and the people that they want to be seen as. All they can really do is pretend like they're happy and they will go around trying to display this to you. To make you think that they're happy. But it is just an illusion. And the closer you get to them, the more you will realize that this is true. Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonated with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. If you'd like to donate, my PayPal link is in the video description. Coaching inquiries, you can email me at coaching at narcsurvivor.co.uk Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.